Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial, and today we're going to talk about the battleship's shafts. Iowa-class battleships have four propellers. Each one is fed from its own propeller shaft. The shafts run all the way from the back of the ship where the propellers are mounted through the center of the ship to wherever they are, uh, wherever their turbine unit and gear reduction box are. So we happen to be in engine room number three today, uh, and this is the backside of the gear reduction box for that main propulsion unit. Uh, this is engine number two in engine room number three. Why is that? Well, the engines are numbered from front to back. So the forwardmost engine room is engine room number one, um, all the way back to engine room number four at the back of the ship. Meanwhile, the shafts are numbered one to four from right to left. So the propeller shaft coming out of engine room number one, the starboardmost outboard shaft, is propeller shaft number one. And, uh, that one is about 340 feet long, going from engine room number one just aft of turret number two all the way out the back of the ship. The next one in line is engine room number two, but that's got the port side outboard propeller shaft in it, number four. Then you've got number three, which has the starboard side shaft again, which is number two, this one right here. And then you get back to number four, which has number three propeller shaft in it. That's just how the Navy names things. There's, there's only one space in the ship where you can see all four propeller shafts at once, and that's the aft machinery room or aft auxiliary diesel space. Previous to that, they're going through engine rooms like this one where they don't have all the propeller shafts in them yet because you haven't gotten all the way to the back. And after that, the propellers are in their individual shaft alleys. We'll see that in a second. So, the propeller shaft is actually made up of several different segments. The shaft is 32 inches in diameter for an Iowa-class battleship. It is a solid piece of metal that is spun down on a giant lathe to be the 32-inch round shape. And then the inner 8 inches are bored out for weight saving. There is nothing put in that uh, empty space. Uh, and here is a picture of Battleship Texas's considerably smaller propeller shaft. She's obviously not designed for the same speed of as, a, as an Iowa-class battleship, and so she doesn't have the same size propellers or shafts uh, that we do, but you can see that her shaft is hollow. Texas's propellers were removed um, earlier in the museum's career, or maybe even before the Navy gave them the ship, because of this, the dissimilar corrosion between the propellers themselves and the steel hull of the ship. So, the first section of the propeller shaft is called a thrust shaft. Uh, but the thrust shaft is attached to a thrust bearing. It's got a, a special collar bolted on it that engages with the bearing. And the whole reason for that is the propeller is spinning. It's pushing the ship through the water. It's supposed to push the whole ship through the water, not just act with that force upon the gear reduction box that's coming out of and push the turbine unit forward. So you've got huge uh, bolted down structures like this built into the framing and the deck of the ship. Uh, look, look at the, the size of these pieces that are attaching this down. And that's transmitting this forward momentum that the shaft is pushing the ship uh, down into the actual hull of the ship and not just into the motor block itself. So we've just moved a couple of feet uh, out from shaft number two to shaft number one. Uh, so this is the starboard outboard one that's two engine rooms forward of us where it starts. Uh, and this is a spring bearing. Remember that this shaft is 340 feet long. And even though it's a 32 inch thick uh, piece of metal, it still bends. In fact, I've heard from several sailors that this shaft will rotate twice on the engine side before the propeller has rotated at all. I've never seen that written down. I'm not sure how accurate that is, but it is some of that sailor lore that they tell on the ship, uh, and those sorts of lore uh, usually 
are helping convey an idea, such as you don't want this thing just hanging there or it will warp or um, twist out of alignment. So that's where the spring bearing comes into play. Again, look at this big structure that it's mounted on directly into the bottom of the ship. Uh, the spring bearing helps keep the shaft lined up where it's supposed to, and again, it's helping transmit some of that thrust down into the, the ship itself. Not nearly as much as the thrust bearings, uh, but spring bearings are all over the place. This one is labeled as 1-6, so propeller shaft number one, spring bearing number six in the line. Uh, each of these bearings has its own lubricating oil. So here's a lube oil service pump uh, that is filtering, straining that oil, and cycling it through the shaft. Also, the bearings inside of the shaft are uh, at least the, the big bearing inside the shaft that is chafing is made out of ironwood, lignum vitae. It's a tropical African hardwood that is very oily, uh, similar to teak, and extremely dense and hard and with a really tight grain pattern. Uh, so that is what is wearing on this propeller shaft, and that is something that can be worn away and you just replace it with another piece of wood. It is not wearing away your propeller shaft. As the shaft passes through watertight bulkheads, there has to be openings there. These openings would mean that the bulkhead is no longer watertight. So it passes through a stuffing box like this one uh, that has a gasket in it. Um, again, this is helping a little bit with keeping the thing lined up, and it's uh, giving you a watertight seal around this while still allowing this to rotate. It's got a packing in there, and you can tighten down on this to tighten the packing more. Uh, it's also uh, often a lubricated fitting. The propeller shafts will spin up to 202 RPMs to attain our top speed. I've heard reports of Iowa-class battleships cranking up their speed to 206 RPM on the uh, shaft. That's revolution per minute, uh, if you don't like acronyms. Uh, so, that is how fast these are designed to go, but they usually don't go that fast. So instead, the uh, sailors would play a game at low speeds called riding the shaft, and that is you climb onto the propeller shaft like this and hold on like a mechanical bull and see if you can hang on for a full revolution without being thrown off. Now obviously, there's a heck of a lot to hit if you get thrown off the shaft. Uh, so again, cannot stress this enough, when you're riding the shaft on your battleship, only do it at low speeds. Now we're down in the shaft alleys. This is the port side outboard shaft, number four, coming from engine room number two. Uh, and this is number four main thrust block right here. You can see that we've got a uh, stuffing box coming through the bulkhead there, then a spring bearing, then a coupling here, changing the line shaft into the thrust shaft. Remember, the thrust shaft just has an extra piece bolted onto it, and the thrust bearing has uh, a pair of feet inside of it. It's going to prevent that from sliding too far forward or aft as the shafts are pushing or pulling the ship if we're in reverse. Uh, and again, this is built into a really thick structure built into the very bottom of the ship uh, so that we are transmitting all of this force down into the hull of the ship for pushing and pulling and not pushing down the length of the shaft. All right, so here you can see in the previous space we went from a line shaft to a thrust shaft. Here's a coupling where two shafts come together. So if we break a shaft for some reason, you can unbolt this in a shipyard. They can pull out that whole section of shaft. Realistically, the whole length of shaft uh, can be pulled out as, as you're taking it apart, and then new shafting can be put in. So this is just a bolted fixture there. And then coming from there, you've got the stern shaft, which passes through a gland seal like this one. 
The gland seal is another watertight fitting in the back of the ship, and this is where the shaft is going from being inside the ship to outside. Uh, on the outside of the ship, there is another coupling which uh, takes the stern shaft and couples it to a tail shaft. The exterior shaft is called the tail shaft, and then you've got the propeller or the screw that's attached to the end of that shaft via a shaft nut, which is better known as a dunch, dunce cap. That's the uh, cone-shaped thing that screws onto the back of it. So this gland seal is filled with packing, and it's got uh, a seawater hookup to it that is providing the lubrication as this is spinning. Uh, this packing is changed out usually whenever the ship is in dry dock uh, to prevent it from leaking. And you've also got bolts here where you can tighten down that packing if it does start to leak uh, to give you a little bit more pressure. So those are the various shafts and bearings that make up the shafting in any ship, but particularly in our USS New Jersey and her Iowa-class sister ships. While Iowa-class battleships have 212,000 horsepower, each propeller shaft can provide 54,000 shaft horsepower on its own. How much does your car have? Let us know in the comments section down below. Do you come anywhere close to an order of magnitude of the battleship? Let us know down below. Ours only gets us up to about 40 miles per hour, uh, and our 0 to 40 takes quite a while. I'm too embarrassed to say exactly how long. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about the museum and the channel. Thanks for watching.